my advice uh, and inspiring words to them would be just just try to keep going. I know it, it's tough. I know it's heart wrenching. And I know that it can be so hard to see your future and what's ahead for you. But if you can continue to be strong and continue to just keep going and keep pushing forward, you can have such a beautiful life and with so many, so many amazing memories and opportunities, and you can meet so many new people. Welcome to another episode of It's Settled, the Amitra's podcast, where you'll hear authentic stories of overcoming adversity after a life-changing injury and how injury survivors, members, and industry experts are making a difference. I'm Andrea Mills, Chief Client Officer at Amitros. And I'm John Kane, Senior Vice President of Strategy. If today's episode inspires you, please subscribe and leave a review to help inspire more listeners facing similar situations. Now, it's settled. Let's get on to the episode and explore the human side of workers' comp and insurance claims. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is John Kane, along with my host, Andrew Mills. Today, we have our special guest, Kadrian Livingston, president of Kids Chance of Nebraska, and Joe Mancini, executive director of Kids Chance of America. We're so happy you guys are able to join us and talk about your experience with Kids Chance. Joe, if we could start with you, and if you can give us some background, what inspired you to become involved with Kids Chance? Sure. Well, first, thank you, Andrea and John, for having us today. Really appreciate the opportunity to come out and talk. And um, really what inspired me to join the organization was the mission. And for those of you uh, out there listening that aren't aware of our mission, our mission is to unite workers' compensation community to support the kids of workers who have, had, who have been injured on the job. As a national organization, we provide resources, develop sustainable state organizations, and power a pipeline of eligible applicants towards these scholarships. So when I look for uh, an organization to support, it's always mission first. And this mission was just wonderful. And the ability to give families a brighter future in a very dark time was something I was really excited about. Awesome. I appreciate the uh, background, Joe. No All problem. right. Kadrian, thank you for joining us. Um, of course. Wonderful um, meeting you last time, you know, hearing about your experience and, you know, your relationship with, with Kids Chance and just want to say you're a remarkable person. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that very much. So uh, what really started with my, um, you know, story is it, it's a really cool story in the sense that it was a um, kind of personal story in becoming president of Kids Chance. So when I was in high school, my guidance counselor encouraged me to apply for the Kids Chance Scholarship of Nebraska. And then, um, you know, she said, she's like, well, you probably won't qualify because it's going to be part of the, the work comp system. You need a work comp claim. And because my father was um, in a personal incident and did not have a work comp claim, that kind of had a big impact on the scholarship. But she said, I think you should go ahead and try to apply for it anyway. And so I did, I went ahead and I tried applying for it. And lo and behold, somebody on the Nebraska scholarship committee actually worked for Gavilon at the time, they're a grain elevator company. And he felt very compelled to my story for the simple fact that my father passed away in a grain bin incident when I was 10 years old. and because of that, he was self-employed, did not have um, workers' compensation insurance, and so really, you know, was kind of just left out alone to um, fend for ourselves for the family. So when I went to college, it was one of those where I didn't have the opportunity or the money to pursue something like that for scholarship-wise, and so I was really needing money elsewhere, and Kid Chance happened to come up on my scholarship. And because um, this guy that was on the scholarship committee who worked for Gavilon, the green elevator company, um, came across the scholarship, he felt very tied to my story. And so uh, he actually lobbied the state to go ahead and change their bylaws 
so that they could include agricultural workers such as um, my dad and be able to include other claims that weren't work comp related and um, self-employed for agricultural exemptions. So from there, they actually um, approved my scholarship. And then from there, um, Gavilon sponsored my scholarship through college and essentially, um, you know, paid my, paid my scholarship through college all the way. Through part of that relationship with them, um, I ended up getting an internship with Gavilon and uh, was able to work with them throughout the summer. And then fast forward years later, I'm now working for them as a regional safety manager. So really exciting story. Um, and then to kind of tie it all together back to Kids Chance, the really cool thing about it is that when I um, was ending my scholarship in December of 2019, because that's when I graduated college, uh, by January 2020, one of the uh, board members, who was actually the president at the time, asked me if I would be interested in serving on the board. And I'm very much a person that likes to give back to people um, when they have given so much to me. And so as a result, um, I did go ahead and apply to be on the board and have since been on the board since 2020. And then uh, just this last year, had the opportunity to serve as president for the Nebraska Kids Chance Association of Nebraska. And it has been such a rewarding experience um, being able to lead our team of individuals and volunteers and um, really set forth what we have, um, you know, some really great momentum moving forward for us uh, and being able to really um, set in stone what Kids Chance is and what they have done for people like me. So it's been a really amazing opportunity to give back and to share my story and to have opportunities like this to be able to show what an impact Kids Chance can make on people and my family. Um, and it, it's just been an amazing journey. So this year is actually going to be our 10 year anniversary. And so we're really, really excited for that and have a lot of cool things coming our way for it. That's great. I, you know, in terms of the, you know, community supporting you and, you know, folks changing, you know, essentially changing the bylaws, you know, to, to help out and providing that scholarship. I know you indicated, you know, it was, it's difficult, you know, from, from a financial perspective, especially where you're going through a four-year school, um, you know, to have, to have that, that support, I'm sure was so beneficial to you. Yeah. I mean, college would not have been possible without that scholarship from Kids Chance. So it truly um, made it or break it um, for me when it came to being able to provide a higher education, particularly in the university system and being able to get a Bachelor of Science, um, you know, from them. So uh, it, it really, truly propelled my propelled my future. And, um, you know, I, I owe a lot of my success in my career to my father's story because uh, you know, if that would have never happened, I probably would have been a teacher today um, because that's what I had always wanted to be um, as a little kid. But since his incident, um, you know, and, and being able to have that support um, from Kids Chance and then turn around and get an internship through an agricultural company, um, you know, all those years later, it's really propelled my career to be where I am today. Uh, as a safety manager, managing, um, you know, different grain elevators and being able to make a really big difference in, uh, in people's lives just based off of my um, previous uh, experience and, and personal story to it. So um, I owe everything to, to just the opportunities that Kids Chance has given me and really been able to um, get me to the place that I am here today, for sure. Yeah, and I'm sure as a safety manager, you're doing a lot of training. Um, you know, checking, you know, the, how work is performed, making sure that, you know, it's safe and, um, you know, accident, accident free. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a really cool journey um, to experience it. So it, it's just been uh, kind of amazing to be able to, so I manage 20 locations right now uh, for our company in the Midwest spanning in Iowa, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas City. And so that piece alone has just been really cool to get to know those personal relationships um, and be able to share my story with the guys on the ground that are doing that work every day. I mean, you know, we have 
guys that are putting themselves on the line every day for the work that we do because ultimately the agricultural industry is so dangerous. There's actually a statistic out there that says that um, farm and farm workers are 800% more likely to die on the job than any other industry. So when you look at that statistic and really take a back from it, it, it's organizations like Kids Chance that can make such a big difference to, um, you know, to industries like ours that are so dangerous and people don't understand the, the proper safety protocols and precautions that need to be taken. And so for me, be, for me to be able to go between both and be able to advocate for agricultural worker safety in my job and then turn around and be able to advocate for uh, kids chance families who need that money and can really use it from an agricultural side has been a really incredible um, blessing to be able to tie those two roads together. Yeah, I'm sure your dad's very proud of you. Yes, well, thank you. <laughs> so, how many um, how many students do you have that are participating in the the scholarship? Yeah, so you know, the one thing that I will say, we had a ton of students at the very beginning. And I was one of those students that benefited from the very beginning of them. Um, you know, I think the class that I graduated with, we had at least 10 students that was with me um, that had received the scholarship. And honestly, now that the years have gone by, um, about two to three years now, we've had five or less students each year um, getting the scholarships. So that is one challenge that we have. Um, and I've talked with other kids chance um, state. And it seems like they have the same problem too of, you know, we, we have all the money and the funding that we can have, that we have, and, and we don't have problems getting that. I, I think, you know, uh, a lot of companies want to be able to sponsor, you know, organizations like ours, and they feel like there's the need and the tie for it. But the one thing that we are struggling with is finding the kids in order to apply for it. And so that's one thing that our organization is trying to make a little bit easier um, and be able to impact a little bit better. So to answer your question, we do have um, about 20 students or so um, that have gone through it in the last five years. Um, but we definitely like to make that impact a lot stronger. We have um, offered over $800,000 in scholarships thus far um, from the time that we first started in the last 10 years. So that's been a really big blessing um, for them. And, and I think it's been a really great impact. But I think we need to be able to uh, increase that number for sure. And just finding the students um, and being able to make that impact for them. So uh, things like this podcast right here is the perfect opportunity to do that. Yes. And from a national perspective, um, we've had 250 new referrals this year, just under 250 new referrals for students. And there is a lot of money left on the table. But from scholarships, we gave out uh, nationally 647 scholarships. And funds allocated were $2,799,624, the average scholarship being just over $4,000. So we're, as a group collectively nationwide, making uh, a lot of impact. But every state will tell you access to students is, is difficult. And getting them in our pipeline, you don't have to just be ready to go to college. You can have students brought into the, uh, the pipeline at any age. And it's our job from a national office to keep in contact with those families until at 16, they then transition to a particular state that will award the scholarship if it's appropriate. So one of our supports from a national office is to make sure that if Nebraska needs students, we're gathering individuals in the pipeline, doing recruiting from our standpoint, building those relationships that will drive in like the ones with the metros. Yeah, I appreciate that, Joe. Um... I, I recently uh, joined the board for Kids Chance of New Hampshire, and my wife um, is a transitional counselor at a school, and she's familiar with the folks at the Department of Education uh, for New Hampshire. So I'm going to be reaching out to them to see you know, if they're aware of Kids Chance in the first place and seeing what we can do to you know, further create awareness you know, throughout the school districts. So happy to be on board, you know, um, 
Kadrian, it's stories like yours that, you know, definitely compelled and inspired me to to join Kids Chance. So thank you. Yeah, that's one thing that we've been doing uh, semi-new in Nebraska is an outreach committee. Um, so that's something that we just developed within this last year. And so they are the dedicated committee um, to look out for those students and find those students uh, out in the state. And so they've been doing a fantastic job. And I really think we're going to be able to see the results of that for this round of scholarship that just uh, got pushed out. So I'm really excited to see what that looks like for us. Um, but the outreach committee has done a really great job of, you know, trying to connect with those um, guidance counselors and, and the principals and um, really just finding different avenues. And so that's been really amazing. And then something that I'd like to start for this year, uh, we actually have a board meeting coming up in a couple of weeks. And so it's on the agenda to talk about is partnering with different organizations that can push our story and our mission out there to find those kids. So um, we have a couple of different nonprofit organizations right here in Nebraska that have similar goals um, and ties within um, the agricultural industry, the work comp industry, and everything in between. And so being able to connect those two dots together so that we can be sharing the overall goal of just making sure that kids have the opportunity to go to college um, it's going to be a really big thing, I think, for us this year. Uh, Kadrian, you know, you're really, your journey has really come full circle for you and in your safety role. Um, we'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, things that are, you're very passionate about regarding safety in the workplace and, you know, tips and tricks that you may share with with our listeners regarding safety, if you have any. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, because safety is so personal to me, I think that's what makes the really big difference in, um, you know, kind of just sharing my story and being able to be passionate about the safety industry. And so uh, that's one thing that, you know, I get to do every day is being able to share that and, and share those stories um, and, and just the, the tips and tricks in general, right? So when it comes to agriculture, um, you know, I, again, I shared that statistic of, you know, that 800%. And that number is so huge to me. Like, you know, considering all the other industries that we have of construction and mining and ironworking, you know, for agriculture to be among the very top of those um, is just something that I, I feel like we need to address. Uh, from a safety standpoint, because I, I think so often, like farmers and ranchers and, and just the agricultural industry in general, get into the mindset of like, we have to get this work done. It's hard work and, and they just push through and they don't really think about the consequences thereafter. And so that's one thing that actually our company has done a really good job of, of trying to take a step back and just say, hey, Let's take five minutes to think about something that, you know, of the consequences of what this might might be and being able to take that step um, and disengage from that work for just a minute to learn um, what some of the risks and hazards are associated around you. So that's one thing that we've really been able to improve upon. Um, and that's honestly the biggest tip that I can give somebody when we get into the grind and when we get to, you know, thinking about things that complacency can really set in. And all of a sudden, like, you know, you're just grinding so hard at the work that you don't recognize the rest of it around you or have good situational awareness of those hazards around you. And so being able to be situationally aware at all times, and not just get so tunnel visioned um, can be a really, really big help in making sure that you're keeping safe, um, particularly in certain industries, and, and just really sharing how taking that step back to think about those things, um, I think has, has been one of the biggest helps for at least our industry, for sure. Yeah, and give yourself a break, take a rest, you know, rest your eyes, rest your body. I'm sure that everyone needs to be reminded of that from time to time. I mean, I need to be reminded to get out of this desk and like walk around for a couple minutes and rest my eyes before I come sit back down. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's that's one thing, too, where, you know, sometimes like our management um, doesn't recognize what we're going through all the time. And so that's one thing that we've really, um, you know, that I've really tried to train everybody that I have 
um, led is to recognize those signs of, hey, like somebody is having a really bad day. You know, Joe is not usually this irritable, but maybe he has a new baby at home and hasn't gotten much sleep. So if that's the case, he's probably not going to be the best worker on the shift today, right? Because he lacks that sleep and has sleep deprivation. Um, you know, and, and there's so many other examples like that where I, I think we need to just have those friends and people surrounding us to where they can recognize when we're not ourselves and tell us, hey, you need to take a step back and make sure that, you know, you're still putting yourself um, in a safe place and not in harm's way because that, you know, that isn't on your mind, right? You have something else on your mind and and we're able to um, have those people around us that can recognize that and keep us safe that way too. Awesome. And I can imagine um, agriculture being maybe a very male dominated um, field. Um, are you amongst a few women or many women in a safety role? Can you speak to that? Yeah. So it's actually really funny. Um, some people might not find it funny, but I do because I, I don't mind it too much. But uh, when I worked at my old job, just as a risk control manager, it wasn't even for the agricultural industry. Um, people would see my name and not know if it was a boy or a girl because it, it's so uncommon. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm probably the only Cadrian in the world. And so um, for them to like be able to try to determine if it was a boy or a girl would be really hard. So some people would just send me emails and be like, Mr. Livingston, you know, and, and keep going. Right. And I think it really speaks to um, just safety in general. It's not even the agricultural industry. Safety in general, uh, there's a lot of women out there that are the minority when it comes to being uh, a safety consultant or a safety manager. And so, um, you know, I, I started actually putting in my emails, obviously, Ms. Cadrian Livingston. Um, so, you know, it would help them out a little bit. But um, particularly in the ag industry, it, I have seen that a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm the only person on my team of safety managers that is a woman out of um, eight of us, right? And so that is truly the minority. And that's not uncommon either to see um, women be the minority for agriculture and for safety. So there's a lot of great, amazing groups out there that are for women in safety. Um, ASSP actually has a, uh, a women chapter um, that you can join and it's, it's women in safety and it's really great to be able to network and connect with um, other colleagues across the world that are doing the same thing as you are and feel like they're the minority too. So there's a lot of great resources for people like us, but uh, we're definitely in that minority of, of um, having to tread through a lot of uh, men to get to where we are. Gotcha. Thank you so much for sharing um, a lot of your personal history and your professional history. You know, I greatly appreciate it. You were introduced to the safety field through tragedy, but how could maybe potentially any listener or their children or someone who's very passionate about safety and maybe is looking for a career change? You know, you got introduced through your internship and things like that, but is there other career paths or programs you're aware of that someone could get involved and learn more about safety? Yeah, my suggestion to them is there's tons of safety organizations out there. So just get involved and the connections will start coming. Um, and honestly, I mean, if they're brave enough, just start looking on LinkedIn. And there are so many safety positions open right now. Um, to be honest with you, I've really noticed an uptick um, of safety jobs and positions being open and, and being developed for new companies that have never had this position before um, because of COVID. I think COVID actually had a really big impact on safety awareness in general. And because of COVID and what people went through during the pandemic has really opened companies' eyes to say, we actually need a dedicated safety person. And this is important to us and we do care about this. And so there are so many job openings out there. And the other thing that I'll tell you is, 
By the way, there are safety degrees because I did not know that when I went to college. I did not know that you could go to college and get a safety degree, but there are a few universities out there that have safety degrees. Um, but I'll tell you, a lot of the people in this field don't have a safety degree. Some of them don't even have a college education. Um, you know, it's really one of those roles where as long as you're passionate and as long as you're willing to do the hard work and the research and, you know, have the, the know-how to be able to study and know the rules and regulations, it's all about learning and being able to learn from one another, go to conferences, um, network, and, and as long as you are willing to learn, this job is amazing to be able to just step into if you do need a refresh or a reset and have the passion for it. Um, it's a really amazing opportunity to just try something new and do something new because no degree, um, you know, no particular degree is even necessary um, to do this job, which is really amazing in the fact that, you know, I mean, you can, you can, so I actually have an agricultural communications degree and I did that degree because I knew that I would be able to hopefully be able to do anything with it. And, and I mean, here I am, I'm a, a regional safety manager. I've never had a safety degree in my life, um, but I'm able to, you know, still lead safety at the forefront of my company. And it's all because of the organizations that I joined um, that have to do with safety, the networking that I did and the learning along the way. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I feel your passion in your voice and pick up on it and, you know, just really thankful that we had this opportunity to meet you and chat with you and hear about your story and really help further the awareness of Kids Chance of Nebraska and Kids Chance of America. Um, so I wanted to take a moment and toss it back over to Joe and have Joe tell us a little bit more about how our listeners can get more involved in Kids Chance. Um, if they have a student in mind, you know, if they want to donate any of those good things, you know, tips for us, Joe. Sure. Uh, first, check out our website, uh, www.kidschance.org. Sign up for our chronicles and our information that comes out there. Check us out on our LinkedIn page. A lot of our information is shared on LinkedIn. Uh, you can become involved in a variety of different ways. Donate. Uh, we have partnership opportunities for organizations. We have sponsorships for our national conference. Uh, individual giving is huge. It's how we are able to continue to support scholarships throughout all of the states, as well as continue to support the states through a national office. There are volunteer opportunities you can reach out for. Uh, you can reach out to me directly if you have more questions at jmancini, M-A-N-C-I-N-I, jmancini at kidschance.org. Uh, on our website, too, you'll see a place to refer a student. You do not have to be directly involved with an individual's case. If you think you know someone that would be appropriate, you can check out our website and refer a student to, towards us through there, and we will do the legwork to make sure that the individual is appropriate for what we're trying to do. And you can also request information through our website as well. So a lot of ways to get involved. Focus on the website. There'll be different paths there, but please feel free to reach out to me for anything that you may need or anybody that's interested in becoming involved in any of the ways we discussed. Thank you so much, Joe. And, um, you know, I'd love to close the episode out with, you know, Kadrian, maybe if you have any inspiring words for children that may have lost a parent um, that you could share with us. Yeah. My advice uh, and inspiring words to them would be just, just try to keep going. I know it, it's tough. I know it's heart wrenching. And I know that it can be so hard to see your future and what's ahead for you. But if you can continue to be strong and continue to just keep going and keep pushing forward, you can have such a beautiful life and with so many, so many amazing memories and opportunities, and you can meet so many new people. And so I, I think that's my biggest thing you know, to anyone out there is just keep pushing through. And Nebraska's uh, tagline um, that we started using is something that I said years ago back at a, a convention that we did for Nebraska. And it was in a speech of mine. And it was turning tragedy into opportunity. And so many people have the opportunity to turn what you what you had to go through into good. And that is my advice to you is just try every single day 
to just turn that into the best good that you can physically do. And so many opportunities will come your way if you do. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kadrian. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, you know, looking forward to us, you know, helping to promote Kids Chance and getting the knowledge and awareness out there. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for the support, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to It's Settled, the Amateurs podcast. Find us on major streaming platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Your review means a lot to us. It helps us share these inspiring stories with more listeners. For more information about Amitros, please visit our website at amitros.com. That's A-M-E-T-R-O-S dot com. And a big shout out to our amazing guests for sharing their experiences and to our dedicated podcast producer, Melanie Samaran. Join us in our next episode for more uplifting stories. It's settled. On to the next time. Stay inspired and continue making positive impact.